This was copper production on an international scale. Thousands of mines spanning a vast expanse of the Near East. We are talking about a huge investment. Imagine you need to mine the copper ore, you need to transport that to the copper smelting, and then you need to export that. And all these people need to be fed in this area. It's a huge organization. So who were these people running this industrial empire? For decades, experts have believed this international metal trade must have been built on the back of slave labor. They dug the mines with chisels. And we have thousands of these galleries and shafts. We are talking about something that was uh, very hard physically. It was very intense labor. In order to discover who was actually living on Slaves Hill, Ben Yosef and his team turned to the waste they left behind. In between the layers of slag, what we have found is amazing materials that are related to the people working at the furnaces. We found uh, what they wear. We found clothes. We have found textiles. We found ropes. We found remains of bones of what they ate that reveal the story of the people working at the furnaces. The team found wheat and barley, as well as countless seeds from olives, grapes, and dates. It's a menu of much higher quality than archaeologists would expect to find in a slave's quarters. Somebody really took care that these people will eat very well. And finding evidence of lush foods in such an arid environment meant they had to have been transported in from far and wide. They were taking care of the very difficult logistics to bring all of this fancy food all the way to the desert. The main encampment at Slaves Hill was producing evidence that didn't fit with the profile of an enslaved workforce surviving on meager rations. At the University of Tel Aviv, Dr. Leider Saper Hen has uncovered further evidence of different living conditions at the Timna mining complex. These are the kind of animal bones that we find in Timna. The majority would be the sheep and goat. Expert butcher marks indicate how the meat was separated out. The remains of the best cuts of meat were found on Slaves Hill. People that were engaged in the smelting activities had mainly the ribs and the shoulder blades and the upper limb bone, the better parts of the meat. The poor meat parts would be, for example, the knuckle bone of the lower hind limb. And we found many of these in the area of the people which were engaged in the supporting activities. A striking social hierarchy had been discovered. One class of slaves or cheap labor engaged in excruciating work in the mines. The other, people who were so valued, they were awarded the finest food. The social status of this metal smelters was high. They were treated as somebody respected. Definitely not as slaves, as was previously thought. 